A lot of people don't know this, but I used to be a storyboard artist for a cartoon show. In fact, when I was at school, drawing comic books was one of my favorite hobbies, one of the things that I love to do. And if you've watched my Draw My Life video that I did years ago, you'll know that drawings are what got me my first job in the entertainment industry. Entertainment then led me to YouTube, which is why we're here, and also producing tech and video game content. And here we are, taking a look at the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, and I feel things have come a little bit full circle. In this video, I'm gonna be letting you know what the Microsoft Surface Laptop actually is, why I absolutely love it, and what I love about it, because there's actually a lot, and a couple of things that I think that are shortfalls that I hope that they address at some point one day. But ultimately, I hope this video helps you as a creative professional, and I assume you are a creative professional, looking at getting one of these devices. But be aware, there's another one that's coming out very soon. I saw that there's a Microsoft announcement that's about to happen. So they may have addressed a few of my issues in that version that's coming out, or maybe this version is gonna go down a price and those concerns aren't concerns that you have, and this might be the notebook laptop for you. Throughout my career, I've used many different digital illustration tools. You get the Cintiqs, the iPad Pros, I have an iPad Pro first gen, Wacom tablets, and the Wacom One. But honestly, I've never actually used anything that's quite like the Microsoft Surface Laptop. It's not often that you come across a piece of technology and ask yourself like, why hasn't this always been like this? And that's exactly how I felt using the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio over the past couple of months. Full disclosure, Microsoft have sent this unit to me with a long-term review in mind. So I've comfortably switched over from uh, one of my other notebooks and put everything across to this. And it's been my daily driver away from the desk that you see behind me for quite a few months now. So I think I've got a good opinion as to what it's like. Firstly, this isn't your grandma's laptop. It's got three form factors. It's a transformer. It can be a traditional laptop, you know, where you can see the keyboard like what you normally would. There's a mode where you can prop the screen over the keyboard so that you can play games or watch movies and TV shows on the screen a little bit closer to you and, it, you know, don't see the keyboard at all. And then there's a studio mode which allows you to lie the screen as flat as possible over the keyboard so it just gets like real thin tablet-like, I guess, and it's there for creative uses. And it's kind of the unique thing about this machine. Clearly it's been designed for creative uses and drawing as its primary use case. We call it studio, lying flat, you know. But before I give you my experiences with it as a drawing machine, let's get some of the specs out of the way. The Surface Laptop Studio is made from a single piece of aluminum, which gives it a sturdy and durable feel. Something that not a lot of Windows-based machines have. It kind of sets itself a little bit apart from that. It's kind of MacBook-ish in its feel. It's also very thin and light, weighing in at just 1.7 kgs for the, for the i5 model and 1.8 kgs for the i7 model. Both models have the same dimensions, which I feel are pretty standard for a powerful notebook, but even more impressive to me when you realize that this is more than just a laptop, this is also a drawing tablet. It's just under two centimeters thick, which I think is remarkable that they've packed all of that under the hood. And I know I'm aware that the iPad is thinner, but as for somebody that is looking to buy this, they're not looking to replace an iPad. It's a fully fledged Windows 11 machine. I mean, the Surface Laptop Studio that I'm using is powered by 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050, which is more than enough power for everyday tasks like browsing, working on documents if you're a business person and just like watching videos, just normal use cases. This is this is clearly not an average laptop. This is, there's something very special about what's going on here. These are comparable specs in my mind to that of a gaming laptop. The laptop that I'm using has 16 gigs of RAM. There's also a 32 gig version and I've got 512 gigs of storage, but there's also a model that can go up to two terabytes for those who are really putting this thing through the paces. But here's the cool part. The SSD is also a removable NVMe drive, which means that you can replace it at a later stage if you want for something much bigger. And you can also probably get something that's cheaper. That's not a, a proprietary drive if you want to do that. This is something that's a lot more expensive to do if you're a creator and you've got a MacBook. And in some cases, it's actually impossible on Macs, especially if you've got like a MacBook Air. The Surface Studio laptop has a beautiful display with a resolution of 2,400 by 1,600 pixels and a buttery smooth 14.4 inch, 120 hertz, 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 touchscreen. This is great for illustration, but it's also excellent for gaming. 
especially with that like juicy RTX 3050 under the hood. The keyboard on the Surface Laptop Studio is one of the most impressive on the market. It's, it's backlit, it's got a comfortable typing feel, the keys are very pressy. Pressy, is that a real word? And they've got really good travel. The trackpad is also very large, responsive, and by far, the best trackpad that I've used on a Windows notebook. This is something that I really feel like I should be highlighting here. A lot of trackpads on Windows devices are terrible. Mac have kind of like taken that for years, for like a decade now. And it's great to actually use a trackpad that's usable that I can edit a video with on, because a lot of Mac video editors use the trackpad to edit videos. You can do that on a Surface Laptop Studio. It's got a long battery life, lasting up to 18 hours purportedly on a single charge with typical use, but unfortunately that's not my findings when I was drawing and doing creative work. But if you're in business, a mild concern for you, I guess, but if you're into drawing, that is a bigger concern, but it's got an included charger that charges really fast. So I often take a break while it's charging up um, and go do something else and are able to continue. Or I guess you just take the cable with you. It's kind of like unobtrusive. It's like a proprietary flat to the, you know, to the chassis, kind of like Windows version of a MagSafe. Like the features that you want to use when you get the studio, like the 120 hertz display and the creative applications that you use, like video editing, they are heavy lifting use cases. So expect to use this on charge for most of the time that you're using it or for short stints if you've left your charger at home. Okay, let's get into drawing right now and illustration. It's very clear, and I've said this before in the video, that the primary use case of the laptop studio is for creative applications. It's there in the name, studio. And when you follow the rules of form follows function, this is very clear that it's an illustration device or creative device. It supports both the Microsoft Surface Pen uh, and the Microsoft Surface Slim Pen 2, which is the new one that they've brought out. One is incredible, the other is absolutely unusable. So don't be tempted by the price difference. I think there's, it's one is one and a half grand uh, versus two and a half grand. Which one is the one that's the best, if you may ask? It's the new upgraded Surface Slim Pen 2. I, I've tried both of them. Uh, the Microsoft Surface Pen is not great for illustration. It, it, it's great for everyday working. If you don't in, intend on doing anything creative, then maybe this is a pen that you should be picking up. But if you want to do anything that's proper creative, the, the Surface Slim Pen 2 is the way to go. And it fits right under the lip and charges right under the lip uh, on the front side of uh, the notebook. And it, it's, it, it magnetizes there and, it's, and it keeps... I don't know how, but it, it magically keeps there. I just think it's really, really well designed and, and, and falls in flush with the chassis. So it's kind of unobtrusive if you're not using it. And while it charges, you kind of forget that it's there. And then when you do need it, you can just pop it off pretty, uh, pretty easily uh, with just your finger. A thing to note is that when you purchase it, unless I guess you're getting a bundle or something, it does not come with it standard. So it's an extra purchase that you have to make on the device, which kind of is a little annoying, but I, I guess it gives you the option of like saving a bunch of cash on the original pen, which is trash, or getting the two and a half grand slim pen too, which is amazing. It is genuinely an incredible stylus. I said before, this thing is incredible for art. It's got that 120 hertz display. The pen is designed directly on the, on the, on the screen. And when you fold it flat, it's incredibly comfortable to use. I sit on the couch and I draw with it. It would be better if you, if that's your primary drawing position to maybe use a, a thinner tablet, maybe like an iPad or a Samsung Galaxy Tab. But I think that there's a lot of value in having a device like this that's essentially a Cintiq for all intents and purposes, that is portable, that you can take around with you and you're able to draw on the road. There are some limitations though, but I'll talk about that very shortly. Because the screen is touch, it's great for zooming in while you're drawing, which is awesome. And that makes it better than, for instance, the Wacom One, which I have on my desk right now. The, 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 the new Wacom Ones have come out, but they have got touch. This is the original one, well done Wacom. But both of these are still only 60 Hertz. So you're dealing with double the refresh rate. If you want to choose a Wacom One over the Surface, one of the deciders probably would be texture, screen texture. The Surface Studio is, it's a very normal laptop laminated screen. So it looks beautiful, but so it, you slide around. And if you're not used to digital art, that sliding pin on the screen is not necessarily the most comfortable. I, I prefer it, to be honest. I've gotten very used to drawing on screens over the, uh, over the years, but the Wacom ones have a textured screen, which kind of is supposed to replicate paper. So that might be a purchase decision for you. To me, the 120 hertz completely outweighs a textured screen, like 100% every day of the week. So let's get into some of the reasons why you may want to choose a tablet over the Surface Studio. I think although it ticks a lot of boxes, some of the problems 
actually stem from apps. The only apps that are available for drawing, there are quite a few, are like Critter, Fresco. I'm using Adobe Fresco in a lot of this video and in a lot of my, my, my illustrations, even on tablets. There's no Procreate and a lot of artists like really love Procreate. I think Fresco is the best alternative. Although Fresco, it is, there's a free version, but you know, you have to subscribe mostly to Creative Cloud, which I have a subscription for. So that's why I use it. There's Clip Studio Pro, which is relatively costly. So you do have options, but again, some of the apps that I've used like Photoshop, for instance, don't have their tablet versions on a Windows machine, which I really think Adobe, if you're listening to this, is something that you need to do. So for instance, I often find myself because the screen is so thin and the bezel is so thin and I mean, it looks beautiful, but when you pull it up, you often touch, like you close the app while you're transforming it into your studio mode. It's a small thing, but from a workflow perspective, you, you know, I usually have it in laptop mode. I open the app that I'm going to use like Fresco while it's booting up uh, and loading the documents from the cloud and all that stuff. I grab the screen and fold it into the, <laughs> to the studio mode. And then when I grab the screen, I often make the mistake of closing the app, which is very annoying because a lot of these apps aren't anticipating you drawing on a Windows machine. And I hope that Adobe, you hear me and you start including uh, the mobile version. Another reason to include those mobile apps is when you fold your screen into studio mode, you cover the keyboard completely. So you have no access to the keyboard unless you plug another one in. And it is extremely annoying when uh, you are doing something in Photoshop and there are no gestures. There is no, um, the, the, the user interface is not designed for you not to have a mouse or keyboard with you. I just feel like there's a huge missed opportunity from Adobe's perspective to, to understand that you're working on a Surface uh, Studio. There are all these Microsoft Surface devices that are out there right now. Just make sure that you, you, you realize that it's a, a, a mobile app. If I'm wrong and those are available, uh, please tell me, let me know. There's two USB ports and you can actually charge those USB ports as well. This is the charging slot, a headphone jack. But those two USB slots are USB-C, Thunderbolt. So if you've got any adapters, you can just expand the machine as you would like any other high-end laptop. But also if you don't need them, you can just unplug them. Um, it's very nice to have. In conclusion, the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio is a great all-round laptop. It offers like a really good looking design. It's got really powerful performance. You can game on it. Uh, it's got a long battery life and it's got a very comfortable keyboard. It's a great choice for pretty much anybody and creative professionals, especially, especially at the price range that it's, that it's at, you know. Um, it's not designed for uh, the average person, I guess. If you're looking for a high-end laptop, that's easy to carry around, looks good. It's not a MacBook, it's Windows based, which is like a lot of our home ecosystem. And I love what Microsoft is doing in general. You have the ability to illustrate on it. It's more than just a laptop. It's also a like creative powerhouse and you can play games, install Steam, install Games Pass on there, PC, PC Games Pass and you know, just connect your, your Xbox controller. It becomes a very, very compelling purchase to be honest. I was actually talking to uh, Jacques, another YouTube creator who's good, you know, that works with us. And we were just talking about like laptops. And I, I think that there's, this is one of the best laptops that I've ever used. And it's because it does everything that I need it to do and more. And the capacity to just not just be, ba do the basics well, which I guess MacBooks do, they do the basics very, very well, but to do the basics well and then some is just so nice. And a lot of the things that I don't like, but the shorter battery life, um, the proprietary charging cable, whatever the case is, those are small prices to pay for something that can do everything that I need to do for work uh, and for my clients. And as a creative person, I was sitting and doing uh, some Instagram posts where I had to bezel myself out. There were some problems. I would normally have to like go through that extract tool and with each of the, it was a collage. So I had to go through the extract tool with each of these images. And I was able to just pick up the pen and use the eraser and quickly, it was just for an Instagram post, just quickly go around the subject and uh, clear up some of those things without putting in extra work. Something that's a lot harder to do on any trackpad, regardless if it's a Windows one or, or an Apple one. So yeah. Very, very impressed with it. Best laptop that I've ever used. I'm very excited to see what the new one comes out, uh, is like, and what they're doing in it. And this is a tier of notebook, which I think everybody should have the chance to try, but especially creative people. Maybe it's a little bit expensive. 56K, I think, is what it's going for now for 
people that aren't creatives, uh, but if you game and you don't want a MacBook, <laughs> even that is like a, a starting proposition actually. And then even just being able to sign doc, look, it's cool. It's very, very cool. I like what they've done. Very, very positive about it. What do you think? Have you used the Surface Laptop Studio? Is it something that you've been thinking about getting? Are you excited about the new one? Yeah. Do you think there's any exciting alternatives that I should be checking out? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in another video. Cheers.